Imitated, never duplicated. Here we are, a couple of silver spoons right on what the truck. I'm doing her with Michael Vincent, the dude. How are you, man? I'm doing great, brother. It's a beautiful Doge Day afternoon here in Chattanooga, the heart of Freight Alley. How are you, my brother? You know, it's an interesting day in the world of Bitcoin yeah, yesterday. It was. It's... Is it too much power for like one man, Elon Musk, between trying to send people up to between meetings to send people to Mars and electrify all the automobiles and take over the grid. He's, uh, you know, some people saying manipulating currency markets by uh, what they did now is. So if you remember, what was it was only a few, it wasn't that long ago that Tesla yeah. said we're going to start accepting Bitcoin. We bought like one point nine billion dollars worth of or something. Yeah. Million. Well, they bought it, but they also said they were going to accept Bitcoin yeah. to buy Tesla's. They just yeah. walked that back yesterday and they blamed it on. The amount of energy used with crypto mining. Yeah. Interesting. Tanks the Bitcoin market. It's down more than 15% yesterday when this happens. Doge starts going down. Ethereum starts going down. Then something interesting happens. Mm. About an hour or two later, he goes, you know what? We're looking into the viability of Dogecoin. Yeah. Suddenly all the crypto markets start going back up. Uh, Crazy, volatile. As long as he does what I'm, what's good for me, I'm, I'm cool with it. Hey, by the way, you want to <laughs> see some uh, shade and fraud? Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at this picture here. So we've all been hearing about these gas hoarders. We have a few pictures of these gas hoarders. One of them is this SUV that tried to, uh, that filled up four tanks of gas, right? They filled up four, ah. four, uh, four, was it four or five gallon tanks of gas nice. at a station in uh, Homosa, Cal Homosa, Florida. The guy fills it up. I don't know. He lights a cigarette or something. I have no idea. The car <laughs> bursts into flames. It's already a gas guzzler, too. So the irony of... <laughs> yeah. I mean, who still is driving around those early 2000 Hummers? I remember I remember in Southern California, these things were everywhere. And it was yeah. typically... Hold on about the, the gas. We'll talk about this one in a minute. But uh, the, the Hummer here, it sets on fire, right? Yeah. Every time I saw these things in Southern California, there's always like a pretty short guy getting in and out of them. Yeah. I think we're probably down to single digits now after that one burnt. Yeah. That are still on. I think, I, think, I think they are. You know, what happened, too, is these started getting burned in Southern California by in like 2004, 2005, when gas shot up to $4.30. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. just vanished. They got like yeah. the fur coat treatment that fur coats got in the 80s when people sure. throw paint on you. Yeah. We have another one here. You've seen all sorts of containers of people putting gas in it. You've seen it in Tupperware, plastic bags. Well, here's someone putting it in uh, cardboard boxes. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> well, I mean, for quick transport, I guess it would work. Well, didn't Justin Timberlake once <laughs> sing about that? I got some gas in a box. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. I don't know. Do we have any more of those? I think we might have one more. Something's. What else is going on? Oh, there, there you go. go. There's the bags, bags of gas. Bags of gas. Throwing them right in the back of the trunk. I don't know. Yeah. That's going to end up like the Hummer. That's not a good move. Right but here's the there. thing. They're not the only. So the, 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 the pipeline, right? The pipeline, it's finally yeah. back online. And maybe it's because they filled this job that there was a posting for. A colonial pipeline put this posting right here up on May 12th. May 12th, like almost a week after the pipeline got hacked, they said they're looking for a cyber security manager. Yeah, I'm sure they are. Well, is that because they didn't have one or the other one just kind of failed at his job? I, maybe it is. I think that <laughs> I might know. be it. That that it either took nine days to approve the position or they got rid of the guy. <laughs> yeah, one of the two. The other things we've talked about is so like the, the top holdings you probably want in 2021. Last year is tech stocks. This year is Dogecoin. Yeah, it's gasoline and uh, lumber and apparently Pokemon cards. So Target has now banned Pokemon cards. You can't buy Pokemon cards at Target anymore because people are getting violence. Really? They're getting violent, bleeding cool. They received a statement from Target saying, the safety of our guests and our team is our top priority. Out of an abundance of caution, we've decided to temporarily suspend the sale of MLB, NFL, NBA, and Pokemon trading cards within our stores effective today. Guests can continue to shop for those cards online. But there's wow. been like incidents of violence in the parking lot. Someone pistol whipped somebody. Another person pulled yeah, a gun out. People are fighting in the aisleways like it's Black Friday over these things. So they're suspended until trading is no longer hot? Because, I mean, it's hot I guess right so. now, right? I guess that's why it is. Yeah. yeah. Alan Adler, people like that are in there just beating each other up over, <laughs> Alan over cards. I don't think, no. Alan Adler, is, <laughs> that's not been proven in court yet. All right, let's tip the band. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Legend Transportation, which has been establishing partnerships through outstanding customer service since 2007. Learn more at Tell'em, dude. Oh, man. NewLegendInc.com. Go there immediately after the show. 
Hey, today's show, we're going to be talking about some intermodal rail tech, automating intermodal rail with this really cool, almost yeah. like mono rail intermodal system. Yeah. We've got a bunch of play it for. It's going to be an awesome show, but let's jump right into the headlines right Do now. It. Okay. Very dramatic. Kansas City Southern declares CN proposal as superior. We've been hearing a ton about this. It started getting a little catty, right? Yeah, it That's was. the way we like our business. Joanna Marsh reports Kansas City Southern has made a decision. It is leaning toward merging with Canadian Railway CN. Upon receipt of a revised acquisition proposal from CN, Kansas City Southern said, hey, this proposal is superior. By accepting CN's proposal, KCS would have to break up a proposed merger plans, awkward, between itself and CN's rival, Canadian Pacific. <laughs> CP has still has said it will not counterbend. Awkward, counterbend. They're over it. Awkward. C, uh, so CN's revised proposal calls for each share of KCS common stock to be exchanged for $200 in cash and 1.129 shares of common stock, including the assumption of approximately $3.8 billion of KCS debt. KCS shares uh, shares would own 12.6% of the combined company. This would give CN's proposal an enterprise value of $33.6 billion. And, wow. And we're talking about creating a railroad that has the operations across Canada, U.S., Midwest, and down to Mexico. Yeah. Pretty valuable stuff. Yeah. Pretty valuable stuff. Well, K KCS has notified CP that it intends to terminate KCS merger agreement with CP and enter into this definitive agreement with CN, subject to CP's right to negotiate amendments to the merger agreement for at least five business days, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is going to cost <laughs> about $700 million to break this up, though, right? That's what I understand. There's a $700 million breakup clause that I guess uh, CN has decided to pay. Big deal. I wish when someone broke up with me, I would get $700 million. I'd have done it more often. Sometimes I'd even get like rings back or like stuff. Not that I would take it, but like stuff you give them. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of just, it's all a loss. It's, it's going to move on. It, it's, yeah, you got it. It's a loss in, of investment. I Jake guess. McLeod says that the Hummer H2s are making a comeback. There's a bigger market than you would think. Well, especially now, there's one less on the road after that one's set on fire. <laughs> um, Port of LA has so we're intermodal, a little bit of a rail focus here with a couple guests and, and in the news today. Port of LA has lengthened its unprecedented run. Kim Link Wills reports the Port of Los Angeles continues its record setting streak, posting the biggest April in its 114 year history. Now, this is like we're repeating this every month now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gene Soroka is executive director and I've uh, been a guest on What the Truck before. He said, it's been an unprecedented run here in L.A. The Board of L.A. handled 946,966 TUs in April. That's a 37% spike compared to a year ago. Although, kind of not a comparison you want to make because that's when freight bottomed out. Yeah, year over year doesn't really work in this case. It, right now, I mean, as we move forward, it, it will start to make sense again. He said that the, the Port West record nine consecutive, has set a record nine consecutive months of year over year volume increases, right? Mm -hmm. Following 11 straight months of declines. So it was that, now it's going crazy. Remarkably, we continued to average 900,000 TEUs per month, dating all the way back to last July. The Port handled 89 container ships last month, up from 76 in April of 2020, and those vessels were being, are, are being handled efficiently, Soroka said. We've averaged 16 container vessels per day at birth last month. Please remember before the surge, our average was only about 10. It's interesting to have this context, too, because we've been hearing for so long there's 20-plus ships at anchor, and then you hear, wait, well, they only get through 89 of these things a month, and that's an improvement. Interesting. Um, uh Port congestion has, has eased a little bit, according to Soroka. He said, uh, we've seen as few as 13 container vessels at anchor in the San Pedro Bay over race, recent days. Narrator, yesterday there was 17. <laughs> yesterday there were 17, yeah. Hey, you know what? Let's, uh, well, there's, there's a, we're going to get to our guest in just a second here. But uh, article on Freightways.com you should check out. This is one you're going to want to read. It's by mm. Grace Sharkey. Blue Wire seeks to empower, empower carriers to fend off Nuclear verdicts. Don't really have time to get into it on the show. Go to FreightWaves.com, though, for all of these headlines and more. This is going to be a very musical shoot show, too. We have two Play It Forward guests. At the end of the show, Jeremiah Craig's going to debut his brand new album. But right now, we have trucker, singer, producer, renaissance man, Damon Hatcherson. He drives for CRST. He's in Hawthorne, California, and he knows how to carry a tune. Damon, thanks for joining us. Hey, how you doing, Tim? How you doing, Mike? We're doing good. We're doing really great, excited. Man. So usually we kick these things oh, off. We man. jump we jump into the song. So just before we do that, though, introduce yourself and the song that we're, we're about to play. Uh, well, 
my stage name is Damon Day. Mm. But uh, this song that I wrote called um, mm -mm, uh, Beautiful One, it was a, it's about my wife. Oh. How beautiful she was, and um, and say, well, it's not was, but is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. The one you get in trouble on here, Damon. <laughs> it's I Damon Day who said that, not Damon Hatcherson. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a great yeah. check. Here, here, we'll, yeah. here. Let's let's roll the clip. We got a little of it. Let's hear how it goes. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let's let's roll the clip. Yeah, sure. Isn't that a great song? That is I, that, awesome. That, that, you know what it brought me back to? It had like, there's a, and this is probably intentional, it has like a very early 90s R&B sound to it, like Boys to Men era from that time. Yeah, yeah, Seal yeah, era, yeah. that kind of thing. Was that what you were going for there? Yeah. Well, you know something? Actually, I was going for a Stevie Wonder type sound. I was going to say, I was, I was going to say a cross between uh, Marvin and, and Stevie myself, I, really. Yeah, because I was thinking, how would he say beautiful one? And he was beautiful one. You know what I mean? Yeah. He would just, you know, and, and man, it just all came together. I'm so excited about this record, man. This, this is my baby. Hey, the, and that goes on to my life record. The people in the comments like it too. Jake McLeod said, yes, Damon. Uh, Marla says, Damon can perform. Your buddy Andy Hedrick is there. He said, awesome. Love hearing my buddy Damon Day do his thing. But we got to ask you, how do you do your thing? Because you're yeah. also a trucker for CRST, yeah. but you've also have this other life as a producer and uh, aspiring Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder couldn't drive well, a truck, you know, could he? <laughs> Not legally. <laughs> Not legally. You probably never know. <laughs> I've seen some drivers out there. Well, I, I just put it out of my head that I'm really not trying to be like a, uh, you know, like fame or nothing like that. But I would, I taught myself over the years. I said, I'm just going to learn how to write and, and still work and provide for my family and CRST. Thank you for my raise, CRST. I really appreciate it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> It's good to be a trucker right now. Is it good to be a trucker right now? I heard you people, you're high demand, right? I'm, we're seeing all the bonuses rolling yeah. out. Everyone's saying we can't hire anybody anywhere. So you're holding some of the chips, but you've stuck with CRST and it sounds like they just treated you pretty well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Eight years, man. Eight years. And yeah. I love them. Uh, Austin Bielstein, Chad, all those cats over there, man, they're wonderful. You know, my DM, Ryan, Jacob Moore, um, you know, Nikki Hall, all these great people who, uh, and the path create, you know, the, 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 the career, uh, I'm sorry, career path lady, uh, Jordan coach, um, uh, uh, Kendall Moore, all these people were, you know, had a really big part in my life of growing in this company. And, um, and I really appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, I, I don't see myself doing anything else, man. You know, so uh, I work six days a week. I got to leave out as soon as I'm done with you guys. Awesome. awesome. Hey, Dad, speaking of out yeah. there on the road, are you noticing any problems getting any gas or anything like that? Yeah. No, 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 none yeah. at all. Yeah. Good. No, I drove yeah, my station today. today. I was gonna, I did, you know, I didn't see, I didn't see anybody riding a motorcycle with them. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? or> like, <laughs> right. 
right, filling right. up your SKB keyboard case with us uh, yeah. diesel. Like, hey, here you go. I got some yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and you know something? Let, let me just say thank you to Andy Hedrick, man. What a wonderful guy, man. That guy's wonderful. Without him, I wouldn't be able to talk to you guys. And I, I thank him so much. My wife, everybody who's been a part of this has been wonderful. And so I, I just want to thank them. That's all. You know, Damon, give, you know, I, heads up. You mentioned you mentioned family a lot here. You mentioned your wife a couple of times. How do you how do you manage? So you managed you told us how you manage the producing and the driving, but how do you manage the driving and the family? Drivers are on the road a lot. Oh yeah. Well, you know something? The way this run goes, this contract, it's uh with William Sonoma. And um I'm home every other day. So I only drive seven hours Fontana to to Richmond, California. And uh, for seven hours, and then I drop off, and then I come back, and then I stay home for another 15 hours or 13 hours, and then I leave out again. So it's six days a week, though. And on Tuesday, I'm only on my off day. You know, I be writing as I go along in the truck. I bring my music and stuff. Here's my little studio. You see my studio? I'm yeah. writing on a new, on a new record right now. Uh, it's called Amazing. Uh, also, I wanted to tell you that uh, since meeting Andy, Dude, you just don't know. I got a song on the radio right now in Canada. It's called um, uh, Keep It Simple. And it's with this group called Three Style. And man, and they said that they can sound a top 10 hit. So I'm just wow. so excited. Everything wow. is just since Andy called me, it's like you just see one thing after another. Well, Andy's been known to pick up the keyboard and, and oh, play yeah. it forward a few times himself, sometimes just spontaneously yeah. making up songs. I think other than Trey Griggs, Andy may be the second most often play it forward. Yeah, He's yeah, always he willing to yeah. jump in whenever I do we casting calls. We actually collaborated on one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah well, He's yeah. in the comments. He says, my pleasure, Damon. I love seeing what is happening with your music coverage. You are super talented, and this is well-deserved. Marla love also you, says... Hi, Andy. <laughs> Marla's in here. She says, I started my career, my driving career at CRST back in 2010. So yeah. over 10 years in a business with over 100% turnover staying with the same company. That That's says amazing. a lot yeah. about what CRST is doing yeah. to retain employees. It really does. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. And I believe it's on the, on the person, too, as well. You got to want to work for the company. You got to want to do your job. You got to want to learn how to back up and, you know, drive safe and drive defensive. And, you know, and you want to keep the job. You know what I mean? You want to be able to eat steaks when you want to eat steaks and you know but um man, yeah it's, it's 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 a great ride man what a what a great career to having two careers man is it's hard but uh my wife is is rolling in with me man she's roll she's rolling with me man. that's awesome that, that's all that matters all right damon it's time the for the wheel of stupid questions <laughs> <laughs> Spin around. let's see what we got for him it Give it a nice spin. spin. Not too hard. Sometimes if you spin oh, it too shit. hard, that thing will just go forever. Though. It will. It'll just go forever. All okay, right. What do we here got? we got. You rent an Airbnb, my friend, in the middle of nowhere. It's a dark and stormy night. It's late, and a stranger comes to the door knocking. And they're telling you they have car trouble, and they want to come in your house. What do you do? You don't let them in. <laughs> don't let them in. Just say, yeah, get out of here. Uh, you, you can't use that. Like, can I use your cell phone? There's no signal. I'm sorry. Just get out of here. Let's get out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, see, don't Damon, I don't know. Damon, I don't know where you're from, but I'm I'm like a city guy, so I get like scared in the woods. They're, like some people get scared when they yeah. go to the city. I get scared when I go in the woods. I'm like, man, there's no one around. If something goes wrong. No, I'm just saying I, okay. the city. I understand that's scary. The woods, yeah. I don't understand. Yeah, that's I know. Scary. If I fall off like a cliff and break my leg, I am dead, and I'm going to die a horrible okay, death. Okay, so like, now yeah. wait a minute. So is this person a a, a a kid or is just a you know? It's 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 just is a stranger, a kid man. Talking, coming knocking on the door and that you know trying to get me to open up the door to let let him in, you know. We're with CBS Records. We'd like to talk to Damon hey, Day, sing, please. Hey, sing, in the in the in the vibe of that song you did, sing us. Get the hell off my property. Get it the hell, get away from me. Yeah. yeah. Can you what sing that though? Give us a, get off my property. Something like yeah. that. What are you doing here? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> Get the hell off my property. I love I it. See your face no more. I would be like, I will when you're done when you're done singing. A little cowbell for that. Who's gonna? Sweet. You're like a siren to the rocks when I hear that yeah, sound. Man. So hey, tell He's me something. Be bad how friends, <laughs> David. How do people reach out hey. and get your music, man? I, I, I didn't hear what you said. How do people reach out and get your music? Oh, you can go to DamonDay.com or it is direct you all the way to Days Entertainment. That's D-A-E-Z Entertainment.com. 
I love you it. You can man. find it on YouTube, everywhere, Spotify, you know. Yeah, hey, without a doubt. Damon, God bless you. Thank you for singing it with us. Thank, Thank you for you. being a good sport. And say hi to your wife for us. Thanks for bringing her up, too. We, we appreciate it. I will. It. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Mike. I love your show. You guys are wonderful. And I'll talk to you guys soon, okay? Take right it easy. On. Peace and love. Peace and love, Damon. Hey, you know what? So their intermodal congestion, we talked about it with the Port of L.A., been a big thing. Yeah. They've been trying to unwind these things. Soroka tried to say, you know, there's only 13 can ships here. That was like one day last week. Every day it's still around like 18 to 22. So there's yeah. still yeah, yeah, yeah. still a lot of ships, a lot of problems. Oh, yeah. And if you've been to a container yard, right, you know that there's you know that there's no real great system for moving all these containers. When congestion no, there, it's really bad. stack them up and then they pull them off, put them on a truck. and Well, Check out this video of this company we're about to talk to. This is, seems like a pretty decent solution. Let's take a look. By going above and beyond for the answer, what? Eagle Rail. Eagle Rail is an elevated, all-electric rail system that flies containers over the congestion issues on the ground. Containers are lifted and shuttled overhead and delivered automatically to their destination, bypassing ground obstacles, including traditional rail, roadways, and even open water. By automating short-haul container transfer, Eagle Rail will sequence the containers more efficiently, improve throughput of the ports, make railroad loading more seamless, and rid the roads of thousands of dirty diesel trucks. The technology aggregates millions of uncoordinated short-haul moves into one integrated port-to-intermodal digital network. And the business model's impact is designed to be as significant as that of FedEx, Uber, and Amazon. In fact, Eagle Rail utilizes both automated overhead conveyance technology and AI algorithms like those found inside today's modern robotic warehouses. And because the Eagle Rail system conforms to international container standards, it will function in every global market, enabling other investments in port and intermodal automation to pay off. Wow. Joining us now, it's Mike Wychocki. He's the chairman and CEO over at Eagle Rail Container Logistics out of Chicago, Illinois. And Mike, I got to tell you, a lot of times, full disclosure, sometimes guests come on here and we know freight pretty well. And yeah. we're like, hey, yeah, maybe that'll work. Maybe it would. We saw this. We saw this video and instantly Vince and I were like, that's a winner. Well, that's what I said when I met the guy who invented it seven years ago. I said, this is a winner. And uh, then we started going to markets Partly to sell, partly to get feedback, and everybody said, I'll buy it. How soon can you build it? So that's when I got involved, and I started investing and built a team up, started getting engineering drawings done, because it was really a concept. You know, when I met, uh, met this gentleman seven years ago, there's a word in the uh, capital raising market, is this a PowerPoint or is this a real thing, right? And, and for a long time, we were just a PowerPoint, and then you saw our slick 3D animation videos, but now we're building our first prototype. We've been to 22 countries, 45 ports, and the feedback, we're, we're, we're tightening up the operational aspects, the technical aspects, but we know the market wants it. It's a big demand for it. Yeah, now I, I was reading a couple of different articles uh, found on your website, et cetera, uh, about things that you're doing. So you you discovered this passion for this through a, uh, I think it was like a 22 country trip with your family, homeschooling trip that, with your family, is that right? Well, you know how everybody has like a second and third career these days. Mm -hmm. I uh, was a partner in a marketing firm. We sold it. And my wife had this wacky idea to take our kids out of school and travel the world for a year. And I said, I can't do a year, but I'll try six months. And so we homeschooled them. We went to 22 countries. And when I came back, I was looking for my next thing. And I knew I wanted to have two, two I wanted to have global impact and the breadth and scope of the supply chain is so mind boggling when you go to Eastern uh, hemisphere and you go to China and Japan and you see ships in Singapore and you realize, you know, this, this whole thing about America being five, we think we're the world leader, but we're 5% of the population. And you go, you see the South Asia, Asia part of the world where they're moving goods at a pace and a rate. So I thought to myself, when I met this guy, something to do with uh, transportation, intermodal supply chain, and a, a, a global market sort of fit my next career. So I got involved with this guy, and uh, I started out as a sales and marketing consultant, and then I started, then became an investor, and then I kind of took the company over through passion because um, we kept getting so much positive feedback on this thing. I thought, I want to see this across the finish line. 
So you mentioned like you don't want to be the PowerPoints anymore. You've got the 3D renders bringing this into real life. What are the setup costs for, for this? How intensive is that? Is it, it looks a lot like a monorail system. It is. We don't like the word monorail. In large parts of the world, monorail is a, a good term. In this part of the world, it gets made fun of on The Simpsons. Yeah. So we stay away from the word monorail, but <laughs> it's overhead light rail, right? It's a more accessible term. But yeah, it, there's a lot of steel infrastructure, right? And you have to support a 60,000-pound container. So it's got to be very sturdy. So the, the cost, a lot of it is in the overhead of the, the, the structure. So we try... When we price it out, it's a you know a cost benefit analysis by distance. Uh, you know clearly we're a short haul solution. We're not trying to be a long haul solution. For long haul, you have traditional ground rail, you have open highways. We're just trying to solve that you know two to ten kilometer congestion, and by using uh, unused over uh, unused airspace overhead, we can fly over ground rivers. You know all these other obstacles. Um, and while the ground is undulating, our track can stay level, so we're not we're not uh, uh, married to the ground t topography. We can you know keep everything level, so it really just makes so much sense. But it is an expensive system. Um, we're very competitive with truck pricing. Uh, if you take a cost of a road versus an Eagle Rail, they typically will price a road, but without the equipment on it, without the trucks, right? So when we price it. We've got to price the rail, the lifters, the carriers. So we kind of give a, a, a complete price. Um, so, but then if you take it on a 20-year concession basis, it's very competitive for truck prices. I would think on so. Like just the, just the, the carbon footprint reduction uh, alone has got, to be, has got to be tremendous. Can you talk to that? I mean, you're reducing all this congestion, sure. but then there's all the idling and, well, and time delay and port, et cetera. So the money savings has got to be huge. We work with... Uh, uh, Price Waterhouse Coopers uh, on a global basis, and they help us calculate. We have two factors: one is financial return on your investment, and two is economic return. Economic has it includes environmental, social impact, road safety, right? So when you look at all of the factors, the economic return is actually almost twice the financial return because yeah. you can uh, decongest roads, you can take particulates out of uh, the atmosphere, you can have road safety. And, and the big thing, especially for your audiences, and then redeploy those trucks for where they should be yeah. used and not running short hauls through a city. That's not a good use for trucks. And truck drivers don't want to do that anymore, right? It's a hard job to fill for these drayage turns. So we'd like to let the truck drivers do the long haul where, the, where they should be doing. What's the brain behind this thing? How does it, How is it powered? How does it, I, I guess, think? Or how does it work? Well, basically, um, everything's digital today. So on a ship, when you bring a big ship into a port, they have a digital stowage manifest where it tells you where every box is and where what port's going to be unloaded on. Now, the ship, of course, has to be balanced. So you, just by weight, you know, it's like loading an airplane, right? Front to back, side to side, depth, everything has to be balanced out. So they have a digital manifest plan, a stowage manifest, and that goes to the port. Now, port uses a digital plan called a terminal operating system, which is a TOS. And that tells you where in stack it should go based on where it's going to leave the port. Then our software is called Eagle Eye, and it's based on a combination of kind of warehouse software, a little bit of AI, and we're building a lot of blockchain into it. So then we take our digital handoff from the toss to say this container should go X and Y, um, and then we hand it to, a, say, a rail software, right? So it's, it's all kind of a digital stream. Um, sometimes... Especially in, you know, we work all over the world. So some of the developing countries don't have the, the trucking software that we do here. And they're still using clipboards and mobile phones, mm. you know. So we can, in your countries like Brazil and India, that have huge middle class growth, therefore huge port growth. We're having great acceptance rates over there. Now, here in the United States, we're having good acceptance rates as, as well. But we have some, we have land here that they don't. We have some drivers they don't. So it goes almost market by market, but this, the structure is, um, it's all digital, how it gets, how it gets planned. But it's, it's basically a, a, a play on uh, what I would call warehouse software, right? So what we noticed in going through these 45 port authorities and interviewing them is about 50% of a container leaving a port goes to two locations and 50% goes to 500 locations. Wow. That you could never automate, nor should you. 
But the 50% that are just going to the nearby railhead and the nearby intermodal park over and over again, that should be automated. Yeah. Right? That There's no reason to have trucks clogging roads to do that job. Makes total sense to us. I know you have information on your site, so where should we send people to? Um, well, you can send them to us, but www weagorail.com or mike.whitechalky at eaglerail.com or tim.brank and eaglerail.com. Anybody wants to talk to us. What's interesting is our Thanks, model, Mike. you know, we, Thanks, Mike. We, we, we appreciate it. I'm sorry. We got to jump over well, to the so, next segment, but you should tell us more at F3, November 8th to 10th, right here in person events are back in Chattanooga Freightways F3, the festival of freight. Go to live.freightways.com to get tickets. Everybody use promo code WTT and you'll save yourself two hundred dollars cool right system on. again we'd like to thank our friends of at legend transportation for sponsoring today's episode legend partners with strategic customers while providing seamless solutions for its drivers is west regional's premier freight transportation company learn more at tell them dude Ooh, new legend inc.com go there immediately after yeah. the show pretty soon we'll be talking to scott Pr- Pr- scott prince ceo over at carrier hq out of Carmel, Indiana. I think we're just waiting for him to come up. We're going to get word on that. Uh, a couple interesting things there. That yeah. intermodal system, what'd you think? I think it makes perfect sense. And, and, and you know, I, I reading through the information there, the one part that I didn't understand was the 50% goes to two locations and 50% goes to 500, right? That's an interesting statistic. And he's dead on. I agree. You, you automate those two. Right. And, yeah. and you take out so much congestion and so much carbon footprint, et cetera. I, I think it's obvious. I think it's um, I think it's a good move. Yeah, I like it. Scott Prince, he's CEO over at Carrier HQ. He's on the show last year and we're bringing him back to see what's up this year. Scott, thanks for joining us. Me on the podcast. Um, so, yeah, no, I just wanted to get you caught up with what we're doing and and. Um, Maybe then talk a little bit about AB5. I know that that's been a hot topic the last few weeks. Um, so yeah, so Carrier HQ, we're, we're growing fast. Um, if you recall, we created a very competitive and flexible set of services that new or existing fleets of one to 20 trucks need to help, help grow. And um, it's all offered via our easy to use portal at uh, carrierhq.com. And um, I, I heard your last guest talk about how everything is digital today. Well, insurance hasn't been. It's, it's been a very traditional uh, procurement cycle that's, that takes a while, a lot of back and forths, uh, providing loss runs. And um, what we've done is we've uh, just modernized the whole process. And so um, you sign up at our, at our portal, and it's one convenient place uh, where you can get no money down insurance with uh, very flexible payment options. And then we also offer factoring, ELDs, and a lot more. Um, and, and last year, dinner, we, we talked about our small fleet program. So we co-developed it with Aon. And it's, um, again, exclusively offered through our portal. And it's the trucking industry's first small fleet safe driving adjustable rate trucking insurance. Um, where if you drive safely, your rates could go down up to 30% monthly in term. And it's really the only program out there that uh, has that type of value. Um, We launched in early 2020. Um, We've grown super fast. And in the last uh, year and a half, we've we've, we've talked and we've we've supported a lot of uh, one to 20 truck fleet customers. And a lot of those fleets, you know, they're seeing their rates typically two to three times that of what a large fleet could be. And so um, with our program, we just want to give them the, the advantages that they haven't had previously. That's awesome. Um, and then Scott. We're open. That's awesome. Yeah. Scott. It sounds like you really have the, uh, you know, the one to 20 fleet trucks down uh, pat, right? Is are, are they growing their fleets like uh, throughout the year? Are your customers growing their fleets up? They are. And so we make it really easy for them first by, you know, offering a lot of competitively priced services like adjustable rate insurance to keep their costs low. Um, But then we also help them improve their cash flow by uh, offering non-recourse factoring. And if you pair factoring with insurance, um, we give qualifying customers a no money down insurance option. And so again, with these folks, it's all about cash flow and you know, keeping their costs low so that they can, you know, have those low down payments and flexible payment options uh, to, to add power units. And we've seen, a, we've seen most of our customers be able to add units steadily throughout the last year and a half. 
Yeah, and you've won a big award recently. Not the What the Truck Heavyweight Podcasting Championship. It's still a pretty good uh, award nonetheless. Tell us about it. That, that's impressive, by the way. <laughs> I, I, we, we, want to, we, we want to qualify for that. Um, <laughs> we won, we, uh, our program won the 2021 Sellant Model Insurer Award for Data Analytics and AI. Um, and it's based on, on the, the benefits that our customers have gained. And then just this program's high degree of innovation, um, you know, modernizing the, the whole process behind small fleet trucking insurance. And then, of course, um, having an excellent level of technology and implementation. And so that's awarded every year. And uh, we're really proud of that. Yeah, so Scott, let's get to that AB5 in California. It's a very hot topic nas- uh, nationally. Again, that could really impact a lot of transportation companies, could it not? Yeah, it sure could. It, it, it's a big topic. So we're not sure what's going to happen or when related to AB5 in California or similar legislation in other states. Um, what, what we've been able to do, though, from the start, um, you know, we built Carrier HQ to, to serve the needs of new and existing small fleets. And so we can help fleets get started down um, the path to their own operating authority. And, um, you know, we've done that. And so our services are flexible enough to uh, help fleets looking to move independent contractors to their own authorities as part of maybe a broker carrier approach to complying with AB5. And so as, as a lot of independent contractors, carriers, just the whole ecosystem is looking at that develop. Um, since day one, we've been helping new fleets, you know, form their, form their company and, uh, you know, get their, get what, get what's needed, including insurance, a factoring relationship and all of those key services so that they can get off and running on a, on a good financial foot with a good solid partner. Cool. Well, before we let you go, just what is some of the feedback from those fleets that you've gotten those customers of yours? Yeah. So no, no, they're, they're really enjoying it. So again, we try to focus on, you know, very competitively priced insurance. Um, we, we have very flexible payment options. We just try to try to really help those, those, those one to 20 truck fleets with their cash flow and keeping costs down so that they can grow. Um, the feedback has been great because once they, they get involved with the program, then they can see their rates continue um, to adjust based on safe driving. And they could go down another 30% within that, that 12 month initial and following term for renewals. And so there's no other program like this. Cash flow is king. And just giving these folks an advantage that they've never had, it, it's just it's so enjoyable to see because again, the country needs more, more drivers, more fleets. Um, you know, we really, we really enjoy enabling that, that sort of value. Scott, we hope to see you out here in Chattanooga at F3, November 8th to 10th. In-person events are back, man. It's so nice getting together. I went to a Chattanooga Lookouts game here, and it just it was my first, like, being around people again. Oh, it felt glorious. It felt glorious. I bet it did. I bet it did. It felt glorious, man. How do people reach out, and how do they learn more? So please come to our website. It's, it's www.carrierhq.com and sign up. And there they can select the services they need to be successful including getting an insurance quote and a uh, factoring application submitted. And both are no commit. They're free. Um, our client success team is here to support everyone strongly. And it just starts a, a nice, productive partnership that uh, can really help those, those smaller fleets. And um, that's what we're all about. And um, the next time I'm on, we're going to, you know, I think talk a little bit more about specifics of safety growth and just kind of maybe some more customer stories that just give you the real, Ooh. real, yeah. Yeah. We Pack can, we some go stories, Scott. We love stories. Stories engage well, the yeah. audience. They engage us. We love a nice story. Love we a nice love a nice story. story Scott. Absolutely do. Hey, Scott, thank you so much. Thanks for thanks for educating us a little bit more on their product and what yeah. Carrier HQ is up to, though. We greatly appreciate it. Have an amazing weekend, and we look forward to catching you on the flip side. Take it easy. Thanks, guys. Now, we're talking Thanks, about Scott. getting people back together. Well, there's a gentleman coming on now who gets truckers together. He gets yeah. them together in Washington, and he does it with 10.4 DC. His name is Todd Campbell, and he's going to tell us all about what the group does, what this year's event is, and, and what it's not as well. You hear a bunch of truckers going to right. DC. You might think uh, it's with pitchforks sometimes. Oh, maybe they're storming the Capitol. You never maybe. know. We're going to find you out. You never know what could happen. Know. This is a neutral event, though. Todd Campbell, thanks for joining us. How are we doing today? 
Hey, Todd, what's going <laughs> on, man? I'm so glad you reached out to me on Twitter and started educating me a little bit on 10-4. I'd seen the pictures before, but I really didn't know what the event had entailed. And we have a few pictures, so we'll show those. But while we're looking at them, tell us what 10-4 is and, and why you're sending a bunch of truckers to Washington. Uh, it's, a, it's a very neutral event. Um, there's no agenda whatsoever. We're basically providing a platform. Uh, we call it the stage, being the National Mall. You park your semi-truck on the National Mall, which has never been done before. We're the only group to ever do it with a permit. As far as we know, period. No other trucks have been there. Um, like I say, we provide the stage and you are the show. So wow. whatever your issues are in the industry, or if you want to educate people, then educate people, whatever, whatever you feel comfortable with. So it's like a, it's like a, a, a you know, like a, a car, car show, yeah. right? I mean, you're, you're showing off your, your cool rig and your custom rigs and stuff like that. I imagine you got a lot of that's going on there too, as well, right? Uh, we have a few, we have, we have everything from uh, fleet owners, let their drivers come some small fleets. Yeah. Um, but but we welcome anybody. I mean, if, if a mega carrier wanted to send their driver to to basically tell the public how to handle themselves and, and conduct themselves around uh, class eight trucks on the highway, then so be it. Do it. We, we gladly welcome anybody. Now, DC has kind of changed a little bit. There's more fences around. There's more security. Was it t was it tough to get a permit for this year's event? Um, they were unclear at what the permits were going to look like. Um, but we just got word back from them, the permit office out there in Washington, D.C., and everything's a go. We have no issues, no qualms, no, no problems whatsoever to actually get one, which was kind of surprising. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that's interesting. So you mentioned it's a neutral it's a neutral event. You can come there and you can you know get on your soapbox just about everything there, right? But I mean, the group is yeah. there. What is the goal there? Just to open up awareness to all the different issues and and why DC? Uh, exactly, it's to open up. That way you can you can tell what your story is. Uh, no matter what you find important, it's important. You know, not one issue is the ultimate issue in the transportation industry because there's so many issues in the transportation industry um it, it's your chance to be on your soapbox or if you just want to be able to do the photo op and then go sightseeing with your family we've, we've got people uh, that have reached out to me friends of mine here in, in southern ohio that says they're coming and they're bringing their their wife their kids and they're going to do some sightseeing while they're there as well why not it's the nation's capital it's it's the there's no better photo op than if anybody goes to our, our Facebook page, which is 10-4-D-C, spelled out T-E-N-F-O-U-R-D-C. Look at the photos there. I mean, there is no better photo op for your truck, and we don't care what your truck is. <laughs> Give it a bath and bring it. Hey, Todd, how did you get involved with this, or, or how did you start organizing this? How, how, does, uh, how does it work a little bit? Let us inside your world. I'm not the originator of this. I was one of the original participants in 2018. Um, I dealt with the guys, the, the Operation Black and Blue in 2017, um, and, I, and I went to Leesport. I didn't go on down to Washington, D.C., but of course, you know, I was all over the ELD mandate going in. And uh, I mean, we went and met with FMCSA. I've had meetings with them, with lawmakers. We've reached out to anybody and everybody we can reach out to, our senators, you name it. We've, we've tried it to get our voice heard as the trucker himself not as a lobbyist or something like that we want the real stories being out there yeah so we uh, a group of guys got together and it's like you know what'd be really cool what if we park trucks on the national mall <laughs> so they reached out, <laughs> Legally. Got a permit. yeah got a permit and right that's cool you know 50 people the first year showed up and we had our our participants the first year ranged from being from california wyoming oklahoma florida uh virginia pennsylvania i mean we were all over the country michigan everywhere yeah that's awesome stuff so todd i understand there's an award there's a P uh, people's choice award that was renamed a miss arlene award why the change in name and uh how, how does it honor what's it honoring uh, it, it's Ar it's honoring Arlene Bennett. She is her husband was a trucker, and, and we unfortunately lost lost Miss Arlene this year. Um, 
She stood up for every trucker there was to stand up for. She lived in the Zanesville, Ohio area, which was, if anybody knows that, there's a loves truck stop there and stuff. Mm-hmm. Accidents happened around there. Trucks break down. She would reach out to drivers, call state patrols. Hey, I heard there was a truck wreck. Is the driver got what they need? She would go get them, take them to the bus, bus stop or go get their belongings and, and arrange shipping to get their stuff home to their families. I mean, whatever. So, and she would go to D.C. I mean, she was in this a lot longer than I was. Like in 2012, she was in D.C. with a group of truckers. And, and this is just some woman on a fixed income. That, that just had a passion for the industry and love truckers. And, and, I mean, how can you not just be inspired by a lady like that would go out of her way on a fixed income, I mean, an older lady, and she would come to Washington, D.C. and stand with truckers. Wow. Hey, Todd, you, 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 mentioned, you mentioned stand with truckers and stand up for the issues. What do you think at this year's event, the two top issues truckers are going to be talking about where they, they want to stand up for each other, they want Washington to stand up for them, they, they want platforms like us to stand up for them. What are some issues we should be focusing yeah. on? I'm, I, I think there's going to be a lot of guys uh, on a personal level. I mean, what I'm thinking, the PRO Act is going to be a really big one. I mean, that's a hot topic. Um, why are we still seeing all these exemptions from hours of service or certain groups are exempt from electronic logs? I mean, people want answers. They want to know really why this happens. Um, of course, the PRO Act is definitely can be a very negative. It depends on how you read it, how you interpret the wording. I mean, this could get rid of independent contractors, so it could get rid of the whole lease purchase part of the transportation industry. It could get rid of guys being leased on to motor carriers. I mean, I have friends that, that are leased on to larger motor carriers because they pull tanker and it's all hazmat stuff. Well, a one truck show can't go just do that. I mean, you're not going to be successful more than likely as a one truck show going and doing something like that, but the expense involved, they're very content where they are. They don't want to change. And the wording mm-hmm. in this pro act could be, they could lose their job as an independent contractor because it won't be allowed. They'd have to be an employee. Interesting. You know, there's a lot of hot buttons with with uh, that are out there because, you know, the, the, the exemptions like you yeah. talk about, the PRO Act. Yeah. There's a lot of different things and there's varying opinions that are out there. You guys are neutral and you allow everybody to come in and say what they want to say, right? Mm. How, how do you manage that? How do you keep that there? And you've been doing it for years. That's a difficult thing to do to not have the group sway towards one side and start excluding somebody yeah. else, right? Or becoming a political rally. Or which becoming is, a political you know, rally. We saw that last year with the stop the wheels or whatever, and it yeah, got hijacked. Yeah. It got hijacked by a political rally. I yeah, mean, there's some alignment rally. between the two groups, but not entirely, and it obscures your own message if it suddenly just becomes, oh, wait, yeah. no, we're a campaign group for, for whomever. Yeah, how how do you keep, yeah. prevent that from happening? It's it's a fine line to walk and, and trying to sometimes when people are passionate, it's hard to change their mind. Um, but you, you try to pull them aside. You talk to them. It's like, listen, you know, you I don't want to muffle your voice. But why do you want to muffle somebody else's? Because you're overwhelming them or you're, you know, you're over talking them. So. Be as courteous to them as they're being to you, and let's all get our message out. We all do our our little thing, uh, and, and whatever your issue is is what your issue is, and don't get too excited. It, you know, uh, uh, several of us went to the May Day thing last year in Washington D.C., where the truckers sat on Constitution Avenue for 21 days. I didn't go there representing 104 D.C. I went there representing Todd Campbell, the trucking company owner. Uh, yeah. And just to stand with those guys because they were voicing their rights. I mean, their right to assemble and sure. their right to, to organize. And they did. And and that was a it was a wonderful thing. And there was a lot of misconceptions uh, about the event, what their thoughts were. So you turn around and you kind of educate. Well, these are all the things we've done in the past. Here's what didn't do anything. This didn't work at all. So don't go down this rabbit hole because it's a it's a waste of time. But I mean that's helping. That's being helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I hear you. I, and that you know that's what happens too is sometimes people they make arguments but they're only singing to the choir. And it's like, look, if you're yelling and attacking these people that you're trying to change their opinion, that's not the way to go yeah, about it. Usually it usually doesn't work. I like that you keep the event neutral. Go to ten four DC. Check it out. It's coming up in October. Todd, thank you so much for coming on. Thank today. you so much.
All right, now we are welcoming country music sensation Jeremiah Craig yeah. on. He's out of the uh, the Boston area right now, and he's a uh, a cowboy boot aficionado. Jeremiah, thanks for joining us. Hey guys, thanks so much for having me back. You're looking great. Love the shirts. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, 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 I need to get a what the truck western, but I've been trying to match it up with like the color schemes and everything. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt, it looks awesome. Thanks for having me on today, guys. Jeremiah, you got a brand new album coming out. What's the name and what are you playing? The the name is Life is for Taking Chances, and I'm going to play the single off of it. It's called One Shot. Basically, the story behind it is back in the Old West, you used to be able to trade a 45 caliber bullet for a shot of whiskey because they were pretty much the same price. So this song revolves around that story and has the main characters from Tombstone. So it's told from the perspective of Doc Holliday. Oh, yeah. Nice. They should bring that back. Yeah, 45 caliber for a shot. I'm in. I come in off the trail with Wyatt, Bat, James, and Virgil, and we were thirsty for some whiskey but had not a penny to our names. My boots were too dusty and my muscles too tired To sit with some inbreds and lie through my teeth for a few card games So the other four boys got a table and I moseyed on up to the bar They often joked there was more silver on my tongue than in all of Tombstone I said, barkeep, we came in only with our guns and good looks We ain't good with the broom, ain't good with the books But a drink would liven up our weary bones What do you say? And he said, empty your wheel gun out on the bar and we'll see how many rounds there are. One shot for one shot and I only deal in a 45s. One shot for the whole lot and that leaves you with one shot for your life. Well, I looked at the bullets, but I looked longer at the bottle. As much as I hated to part with those five rounds, flash for taking chances. So I told the boys we had a deal, and they all came up for their drinks. Then my eyes stopped at the stairs, and Big Nose Kate and I were exchanging glances. Last I saw her was when the rangers took me from her bed, but she helped me escape before they could put a rope around my neck. She walked on over to where the mouth breathers were playing. One spouted a curse at her. I guess they weren't playing with a whole deck. I didn't know your family was at the park. I said, you got one shot to apologize, or I'll put one shot between your eyes. Yeah. One shot for one shot, and I only deal in a 45s. One shot is all you got. You got one shot for your life. And then he said something dumb like he don't apologize to whores. So I figured he was asking for all the things that would come next. I still had my whiskey in my hand when he reached for his gun. But he was all wrist and it's all hip, so I kept my word a la tete. Then I was empty, but I hadn't spilled a drop. His friend made a move, but I was quick to my knife. He knew he'd been beat by the shine of the blade. I finally drank and said, give me your bullets and I'll let you leave with your life. Well, before he ran, he let them fall on the ground. And I bought the boys in case another round. <laughs> one shot for one shot. And I only deal in a 45s. One shot is all you got. You got one shot for your life. Yes, all right. One shot now. One shot. And you were jamming hard with that one. It's a cut off your new album. Is it, where do you get the, is it up on Spotify? It is on Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere you listen to music, it should be there. That's you can awesome. find the links to it at jeremiahcraig.com slash chances. Now, Jeremiah, are you going to come down? So look, events are opening up. People are getting vaccinated. Things are loosening up. Restrictions are loosening up. You've been in this virtual world having to play these uh, virtual jam sessions. You looking forward to getting back in front of the people? Oh, I cannot wait. I've been itching for it for the longest time. I'm pumped to get back out there and play in front of a real live audience. 
Yeah, you, he's got to come to F3. We're inviting everybody to F3. Oh, yeah, you got to. Get, you got to. Biggest got party to. in freight. It's a festival of freight. We're going to have live music there. We're going to have sessions. We'll have what the trucks. We'll have drones. We're going to have all sorts of things going on. It's November 8th to 10th right here in Chattanooga, man. We'll have you play. If you want to totally come down, we'll have down. Let's set it right up. On what the truck. Yeah, man. We'll, I'll send you some details it. on it. We'll get you down here. We're awesome. going to make this thing huge. We are going to break every single fire code imaginable. No, I'm sorry. I'm not saying that. That's not <laughs> what we're going to do, fire department. No, 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 no. Actually, hopefully some of this stuff will be outdoors, too. We're taking over over 30 locations. We're going to get blanket crazy, man. Chattanooga and Freight, Freight Alley. We're taking it over. Jeremiah, really cool stuff. What are you up to next after? So you got this new album out. You got to go and promote it. What are you, uh, what's next on the agenda? I'm looking forward to getting out this summer and playing shows live uh maybe down in chattanooga uh yeah. with you guys this november maybe down in austin texas and trying to plan a trip down there so really this summer is just about getting back out in the world and playing and entertaining folks in person that's awesome we that's love it awesome. jeremiah well hey how do people reach out and learn more you can go to jeremiahcraig.com if you want to learn more about the album and find out where you can listen to it on your favorite digital streaming platform. Go to jeremiahcraig.com slash chances. Everything should be there. Now, Jeremiah, we're going to play a quick video of a trucker doing a good deed, and then do you want to play us off the air? I would love to. All right, hang out. Let's play this video really quick. Let's see how this trucker helped this, this elderly lady out. Check this out, man. He's got the lift gate down, huge puddle. Elderly lady Get going over. Yeah, look at this, man. This Driver comes awesome. over. He teams her and says, hey, I'll help you get across. He puts his lift gate down, gets her right over to her car, makes sure she's over there safely. If anybody deserves a cowbell, it is that <laughs> driver. That you got to nice. take care of people, man. Love seeing that. Look at that. Got her safe. Nice lift gate. Love it, man. <sighs> hey, Tim, we got about three minutes. Play, play us out, keyboard cat. You got it. This is Dusty Vines. It's a song about the wine that they make in Arizona. Blood of the land is in the body of the West, and you can tell around harvest time. Yeah, the fruits of labor make it a grand one to savor, along with the struggle in the vine. You can make it on down to the Cochise County line with the arid air in your nose. Taste the toils and the triumphs and feel the trails of the migrants without leaving to see where it grows. And I'll raise my glass up high. Yes, I'll raise my glass to the sky and toast to the whole desert away. Yes, the West is still wild when you look on it for miles, but there's a new kind of gold rush this time. Bring in the riches straight to your lips. It's the wine from these dusty vines. Yeah. This has been the land of the fighters since we learned what it offered. And it's always rewarded the tough. And these vines would make those old gunfighters proud. Surviving no matter how rough. For in this old desert, you gotta take what you can get. And get while the getting's good on the land. When the hard winds bring in the rain from the south you can get clusters that fit in both hands and i'll raise my glass of pie yes i'll raise my glass to the sky and toast to the whole desert away Yes, the West is still wild when you look on it for miles, but there's a new kind of gold rush this time. Bring in the riches, straight to your lips. It's the wine from these dusty vines. I'm going up on the mesa with my dusty vino, and I'm watching the sun go down. I revel in the land's beauty and the wine in the glass And the fact that it came from its ground 
Yes, I'll raise my glass up high. Yes, I'll raise my glass to the sky and toast to the whole day.